Hello and welcome to the seventh video in seventh no eighth eighth video in this series programming the simple floppy robin for Android uh, using Cocos 2 DX. Last video then we arrived at the state where we've got things scrolling on the screen. It's looking sort of like a game. One thing I've changed in the code since you saw the last video is in hello world scene.cpp. Hang on, I'm just closing some tabs here. I've moved the code that was inside Touches Ended into Touches Began. It's a simple copy and paste job, there's no other change. And the reason I've done this is I found the app a bit more responsive for touching the robin, or at least for me, uh, particularly when it drops uh, a relatively large distance. I can now keep the robin in the air for more than five or six seconds, although I missed it there. And before, when uh, I had it with the touches ended, it wasn't working so well. So I found that a little bit more responsive. So today we're going to start the first of probably what will be two or three videos adding the tubes on that the pipes that, that extend from the top and the bottom of the screen that our Robin then has to avoid. They work in principle in a similar manner to how the other scrolling object, objects work, but with uh, a couple of differences. Obviously, when they go off the screen to the left-hand side, they don't get reset to the right-hand side and then carry on. And the reason for this is I, we, I want a variable sort of random pattern of tubes, unless anybody suggests otherwise anyway. And that means that what, the way the things will run in the scene is we'll have a, a variable timing for us and we'll be setting every time a new tube is created, or a pair of tubes for top and bottom, They'll be, we'll then set a, a random time between sort of two and four seconds but before we create the next set of tubes and so on. That means then the tubes we create, when they go off the left hand side of the screen, something needs to happen to them. So what we'll do is we'll have a state variable for our tubes saying whether they're active or inactive. And when they go off the screen, they become inactive and they get then positioned, at, I don't know, with an X value of minus 1000, so way off the screen. And when we need to get a new tube, we can see if we have any inactive tubes that we've created before, and if so, start them again on the right-hand side of the screen. You'll see how all that works in a video's time. Now that means then we need to create something similar to our Cloud Objects class, but with some differences. So with that in mind, I'm going to go into constants.h, and I'm just going to make a couple of definitions. I'm going to define, define k tube state. Uh, inactive as a zero and define k tube state active so that means a lazy copy and paste here and set this as a one like so and this is like so so we've got the states here defined for our tube now what we need to do is create our tube class so on the classes I'm just going to right click and add a file and cancel because I need to make a new file and C++ class and we'll just call this C tube like so and create and here we have our tube class and now I'm going to do something that's not recommended usually but for the sake of this simple app and tutorial let's do it I'm going to copy all of the code here from the cloud class and drop it into tube.h like so now before there are some comments on it, I'm well aware that I could make a parent class here which probably encompasses the robin as well that these inherit from, blah 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 but for the sake of this simple app and tutorial I'm going to keep things separate. If you want to, feel free yourselves to separate everything out. So the first thing I'll do is change the create cloud to create tube with file name and now some of the things in here are going to be a little bit different. The set speed and width we're going to change to init if I can spell it correctly. And inside this is initialization. We want the speed, the width, as we've had before. We also want the X offset because that's when we know it's finished going off the screen. But here what we're going to have is an inactive X. And this will be this minus 1000 or whatever, which will tell it where to go in the X coordinate when it's finished scrolling across the screen. That one other thing we need is I mentioned that we're going to have a state, so we want to be able to get the state of the tube, so we'll have a function that does that. And now inside the variables here, I want to create one for state, or SATA, as it said there, and also want to create the variable for the 
inactive x, like so. And this will be set then by the initialization function. So that's all we actually need to do for the class definition here. I'm just going to go into cloud and also probably make all the programmers watching this recoil in horror. I'm going to brutally jump, uh, dump this with a copy and paste like so. And we'll go from top to bottom now and change the functions because there are some differences, but not many. So the first thing is we've got our create tube with file name and we create our tube sprite. And one thing I want to do here, of course, when we create our tube, it'll be inactive, but we also, uh, oops, not this, it's sprite. We also want to set our sprite's visibility when it's not active to false because we want it to be invisible. Let's move on then to the start where we start our tube moving. Now I've said that when they're inactive the tubes they're sitting way off the left hand side of the screen still. It's not like the clouds or the mountains which are repeating what they're doing. They shouldn't have any actions running but we'll stop all of the actions. But this current x we actually don't need now because we know what distance the tube is going to travel because it's going to be positioned to the right hand side of the screen. And when the robin falls off the screen or crashes or something all of the tubes will be set to inactive off the screen. They won't simply sit still like the clouds or the mountains do. So that means then the distance that it actually has to travel is x offset pixels off the right hand side of the screen plus the screen width and then plus this x offset again off the left hand side of the screen. So that's its total distance it needs to travel. The time calculation is the same and the destination calculation obviously or destination point is the same. So we have our CC move to and we call our reach destination when we're done except obviously we need to make that CC tube. And now a couple of important things in here. One is we need to set the state of our tube now to K tube state active and we need to set the visibility of our tube now to set visible and true and now we can run our action because we're active and we're going and we can say start moving across the screen so once we've done that then we need to look at what we do then when the cloud is stopped well actually here we call reached destination. So what I'm actually going to do is go down to reach destination and we're simply going to call stop here and the reason for this is because we use under another circumstance also the stop function so I've separated them out like this. I'll just drop our C tube in here as well like so. Let me just go back to ctube.h, take this initialize definition here as well so that I don't get quite so many errors appearing. There we go, good. Okay, so we called stop with the reach destination and now let's go into the stop and actually stop the tube. So to stop the tube, we need to set the visible to false because it's no longer visible. We'll set the state then equal to K tubes, oops, that's a J to K tube state inactive. And now what we want to do, and this is a crucial bit, is actually set the position. So we'll go set position and the CCP and here we want to set the X to the offset sorry the inactive X and then the Y doesn't really matter because the Y's get changed when they get made active you'll see that in a later video uh, this and get position Y like so so what we've done is is made it invisible the tube set its state to inactive so that the program knows when it's looking for an inactive tube that this one's an active one and moved it way off the screen to the inactive X that was set in the initialization. So going down then to the initialization we need to set the inactive X equal to the inactive X argument and the other thing we need to do is we actually need to set its position now to being completely off the screen where all the inactive things are and we'll just set the Y as 0 and the other thing we can do is set its state also to inactive like so. So in the initialization it's set miles off the left hand side of the screen or lots of pixels off the left hand side set to inactive and the other things we calculate in exactly the same manner that we did for the C cloud class.
So that's actually all the code we need to do for our tube class and that's it ready and raring to go when we start adding them into our hello world scene. So we've been going now in this video for 10 minutes. I'm going to stop there because the code for getting the tube, spawning the tubes at intervals on the screen is quite involved. It's not complicated, but it's going to take probably a good 20 minutes to go through. So I'll stop this video there. And if I just run the application, it should still build and run without any errors, hopefully. Good, it does. And in the next video, then we'll start looking at adding our tubes into our application. So thanks very much for watching. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.